In today's video, I'll give you a complete tour of my entire LEGO city. I've been working on this layout for two years now, including two other projects, a LEGO Wild West Village, as well as a moon base. I'll also show you the current progress of these two projects during this video. At the end of the video, I'll also let the trains run. But for now, I'd say we start the tour, especially focusing on all the little storytelling going on regarding the Mafia gang ruling the city. We're starting today's LEGO City tour in the center of the city, in that building right there, because that's where the Mafia story originally started. If we take off the roof, you can now already see some suspicious activities going on inside. And what's actually happening is counterfeit money is being printed by the Mafia. They've also bribed police in the city. Therefore, you can see police officers actually working with the Mafia. They are checking if the quality is good enough in order to pass as real money. Then if we take a look on the other side of the building, you can now see how money is being carried to another building, which is actually the office of the Mafia boss. Inside the office, of course, a ton of money is also stored. And then these two buildings are actually the center and the core of the entire Mafia story in my city. Another key story of the Mafia is in that very building right there. You can see already some of these workers that are dressed the exact same way as the guys back in this house producing the money. And now if we take off the roof right here, you can already see this doesn't look quite normal and isn't an everyday activity. What's actually happening right there? This is the boss of the mafia and he's now using his counterfeit money in order to buy weapons in order to use them to gain more power in the city. If you have such a high profile trade going on, the entire thing is of course being guarded by these two guys right there. And then all the workers on the outside I've mentioned just a second ago are simply undercover guys ready to fight should they be ambushed or something. This story isn't all because we continue back there. On top of the museum, I think you can already see something going on up there. And in order to show you that in detail, I'll have to get closer. Up on the museum, we have these three guys and the glass roof right there is already broken. And obviously what's happening is the museum is being robbed. If we take off this part of the roof, we can now see this guy right here, who's obviously part of the mafia, is currently helping this guy climbing down into the museum and obviously robbing the entire thing. Right here, for example, this is the first stone jewel and well, the rest that's inside the museum isn't too safe at the moment, I'd say. Being in the back of my LEGO city, I quickly wanted to use the opportunity in order to show you that every single building does in fact have a full interior, as you can see right there. All the different floors are in fact connected by stairs right there. I'm unfortunately running out of space in order to separate all the floors. Right there, you can see that sometimes I've connected this is, for example, right there the case. Sometimes I've connected the different floors from building to building in order to have larger apartments. I, <laughs> I'm really running out of space right now, but I think you get the idea. I mean, the 10th bed isn't that interesting. Sometimes on the right hand side, you can see that I've also integrated small shops. For example, the bakery right there. I'm currently standing on the upper platform of my city. And now I'm coming back to the counterfeit money story, as you know. The money is printed in that building right there. And as the police is currently being bribed and therefore can't be trusted, we have another guy investigating the entire thing. And in this apartment, you can see our first detective who is currently spying on the guys printing the money. Therefore, we have the microphone and he already has the first counterfeit money bill on his table. Once again, most of the buildings have a full interior, except these buildings up here, because that's where I'm currently building. This is my main goal to get rid of the straight lines. I was always talking about this in my other city updates because it's easy to build along the studs. But this right here is much more difficult to have all sorts of different angles inside the buildings. And therefore, I'm currently focusing on getting the structure of the buildings correct. And therefore, most of these buildings right there don't have a full interior yet. But I'm sure that will follow at some point. Before leaving the upper platform of the city I'm currently standing on, I definitely need to show you something else. It's this building, my first skyscraper mock, although it isn't integrated into the LEGO city layout yet, we can open the entire back wall. And this is why this building was so expensive because it has, as you can see, a full interior. On the upper two floors is actually where the mafia boss lives. This, for example, is another gimmick I added. This entire wall can be turned. And on the back side 
is the computer of the mafia boss where all the important data is obviously stored and then if his apartment should be raided he could simply turn the entire wall and then only his wardrobe is being shown and therefore police wouldn't find anything. We have a functioning elevator right there. If I turn up here, you can see the elevator going down. Works of course for up as well. So it's a bit annoying. I think I'll add a motor at some point. On this floor right here, we have a small wellness area. Here's another apartment, small kitchen right there. And then we have sofas, a TV, and then around the corner, the bed. And this down here is the lobby. On the upper platform, you can also see roads laying around that aren't integrated into the layout. This is because I'm moving the city next month and therefore I'll need to see what the new space has to offer. And therefore I'm also not planning how exactly I wanna continue the tram line at the moment. Down here, we have besides all the mafia stories, some normal buildings as well. Right there, for example, this is a bakery. Don't know if this is counterfeit money or not, but just a normal bakery. This building right there, I think is still empty if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so this is something I'll tackle within the next weeks or so. Down here, the harbor is definitely still too empty at the moment. I only have my fishing boat mock place down here and the rest of the harbor, as you can see, is still a bit too empty and therefore also too gray in the background. But I think that problem will solve itself as soon as I'm adding more ships. Leaving the city, we now have this large mountain in the background, all these trees in front. My main goal for this part right here was to size down the trees and the scale in general. So in front I have everything in minifigure size and towards the back you can see the trees towards the mountain all getting smaller and smaller and therefore sort of forcing the perspective to make the mountain look bigger. I plan on continuing the mountain of course and also adding snow on top, maybe even a small skiing resort, but I'm not quite sure about that yet. That will be a project as soon as I've moved the entire city to the next location and the future Lego Museum. On this hand, we have all these half-timbered houses. I really like the aesthetics of having every single house in this old medieval type building style. And also with the train tracks in front, this is probably my favorite part of the entire city at the moment. In front of the church, we have a small wedding going on. Although I gotta admit that the village in general is still a bit too empty, if you ask me. And I think I need to add more life, more minifigures and so on. Although the pattern down with the tiling looks quite nice and was extremely annoying to build. I think we have to cover that up. It's simply a bit too quiet. Starting in the back of the Lego city, I've added a waterfall that leads into the lake right there then goes into a stream underneath these three bridges right there, passes through the entire rural area and then eventually leads to the water mill. Although I didn't add a full interior right there, I've added a motor. I mean, it's the simplest construction ever, but it works. <laughs> That's all that matters. Let me turn that on right now. And then I can use the remote control in order to start the water mill. I mean, just listen to the sound. It's obviously way too loud. So I probably need to switch out the motors to something that isn't original Lego, which is a bit of a bummer, but well, it looks fantastic if you ask me. This right here is what the city looks like from behind the mountain. Quite a rare perspective because you don't get to see that during my normal Lego city updates. And if we take a look behind the mountain, this is what the entire construction looks like. I didn't bother to clear everything up because that's the reality of building Lego. Pieces fall down and this is what it always looks like behind the mountain. As long as the train tracks are clear and the train is ready to go at the end of this video, everything's good. I've sometimes, back here you can see that, used Lego Duplo in order to stabilize the entire thing. It's by the way, completely compatible with normal Lego. And in this section right here, I've used these large yellow beams because they were quite cheap and therefore this was the perfect solution to stabilize the mountain from beneath. Following the train tracks inside the city, passing the village right there, we would eventually get to this tunnel right there. And this now leads us over into the next two rooms. I can now blend in a video what it would look like if we were actually riding this train. I've mounted a GoPro onto the train and now we pass through this first tunnel inside this small room in between the Wild West Mock and my Lego city. And then through the second tunnel, we now enter the Wild West Mock. And with that, it's time for the second part of the tour. Before letting the trains run, I'll show you my Wild West Mock.
One thing you might have noticed by now that the crime rate in my Lego Mox is quite high with the counterfeit money being produced in the Lego City and it's nothing else in the Wild West Mock. First of all, let me start in the center right there where the sheriff's office is. We also have a small prison break going on right there. These two bandits are helping their colleague escape. There's one guy guarding the entire thing. The sheriff is nowhere to see. Over in this corner of the Wild West Mock, we have more bandits currently on their way to robbing the gold mine I've built back there at the end of this ravine. And obviously, the workers don't want their work of the day to be stolen and therefore they're on top of this mountain throwing down barrels into the ravine in order to defend their work of the day and all the gold they've mined. So as you can see, quite a lot of action going on right here. On the other side of the Wild West Mock, we have more bandits currently planning and preparing a train robbery. As you can see, the train tracks pass right by that mountain where currently weaponry is carried up onto these hills in order to then launch an attack on the train tracks. In general, I always try to build everything as detailed as possible. I made one giant exception, all the canyons and the backdrops of the Wild West Mock. I simply used normal bricks in order to get the landscaping right with a few plates mixed in on top in order to round all these canyons off. But my main goal right here was to not use any slopes, but simply normal bricks as they have existed for several decades now. I of course also have a cemetery in the Wild West Town that can't be missing with a duel going on. This right here is the road that leads into the town itself with a small carriage. I spent quite some time designing this, but I really like the looks of it and it was lacking in my Wild West Town for quite some time. And then in the back, you can see the main focus I had when designing buildings in my Wild West Town. I wanted to write the name of the stores on top of the buildings themselves, only of course using Lego. Did that with the gun store, the bank, the saloon, as well as the station. When it comes to the train tracks, they come out of this tunnel, then go around in a loop through the entire Wild West world, right there in the back where the train robbery is, and then they disappear behind these canyons there, and then go through the wall into the Lego City room once again. Right beside the Wild West Town, I'm also working on another project, a Lego moon base. The majority of the moon base at the moment, of course, is still empty. I only started designing the base itself on this side with a landing platform, fuel station and some solar panels in the background. And of course, as you can tell by the empty wood right here in front of the moon base, this project by far isn't finished yet. So this is probably something I'll then finish over in the future Lego Museum in the coming months. And now it's finally time to let the trains run. I thought it might be a good idea to show you from a bit further away what it looks like if the city is in action and all the trains are running. Normally I always show close-ups of the train, but I thought this might be a nice opportunity for you to actually get a feeling of what it looks like if you're standing in front of the city and my trains are running. I won't go too far into detail regarding the different models I've built. I have three main models. I'm using this red train right here, which is based on a locomotive from the Austrian railway company. Then I have my steam engine locomotive, which is actually one of my favorites. It turned out quite nice, if you ask me. And it also sort of fits into the city as well as into the Wild West layout, which is also why this is one of the trains that is operated the most because right now in my current layout, both train tracks, the one in my Lego city as well as the one in the Wild West Mock are connected via the tunnel as I've shown you during the video. And therefore that's the main train that's running. I actually also really like using the Lego Crocodile, which is one of my very few original Lego sets I'm using in the city. Although I gotta say that I switched the entire motorization because I'm running all my trains on nine volt and it was powered by batteries, which is always a bit annoying. Also so what I'm always getting asked in the comments down below is if I could upload a full POV train ride with a GoPro mounted on the train. I've actually uploaded a video. I've linked that right there in the corner or the first link in the video description for the full train ride. That's it for today's tour. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next one.